And first of all, I want to talk about China. Uh, you know, we've talked about the fact that China doesn't necessarily have to be on a set path. But isn't it fair to say if you're going to invest in nuclear submarines, if you're going to use some of the language that members of the Conservative Party, the language you've used in the past, actually it is going to be conflict more inevitable. It's going to create a backlash. It's going to feel to China like it's been isolated more. Well, it's really important to note that AUKUS, the AUKUS partnership, is not about any one country, and I'm sure we'll come to talk about that in a little bit more detail in a minute. With regard to China, it's increasingly clear that China is a country that does have different values to ours. It poses a systemic challenge, and its behavior is concerning. More authoritarian at home, more assertive overseas, and in light of that, it's right that we take the steps that are necessary to protect ourselves and to stand up for our values. So, for example, recently we blocked investment in a sensitive sector of our economy in semiconductors, and people should be reassured that we will always do what is required to keep us safe. So what do you say to your Conservative members, your backbenchers, who say you need to be tougher, you need to be stronger, you need to be more vocal when it comes to China? Well, I'd, I'd say our actions demonstrate that we are doing what is necessary to keep us safe. You know, we're blocking investment in sensitive areas of our economy, like semiconductors. We removed surveillance, Chinese surveillance equipment from sensitive areas. We're passing new laws to ensure that there's transparency and accountability of money that's being invested into our universities and research establishments. And so you know, those are all examples of, of what we're doing to keep ourselves safe. And I would also say is that our approach is completely aligned with that of our closest allies. America, Australia, Japan, Canada, all of us are on the same page in how we think about China, how we're approaching it. I spoke to Prime Minister Albanese from Australia about that last night. I'll be talking to President Biden about it later today. And I'd say to everyone, know that your, our allies as a country are all working together. We share the same view and we'll act together. Uh, let's talk about President Biden because you're also going to meet him uh, later on uh, today, aren't you? And you've had the free, Windsor framework. It seems that people in Washington are now open to a trade deal, to reopen those talks. Are you open to that? You're going to suggest to President Biden that maybe you should take that out of the freezer and get an ambitious trade deal done with the US? Well, I think that it was, it was a great step forward for the people of Northern Ireland, first and foremost, for us to be able to conclude the Windsor framework. I believe it will restore the balance of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement. What about Agreement. trade, though? Now, look, with America, America is always, and, and has always been for a long time, our closest economic relationship. It's our single biggest trade partner. There are one and a half million of each of us, Brits and Americans, to go to work at each other's companies every day. You know, we sit together in lots of different ways. And, and trade, actually, with America grew last year by 15% already. Now, all of that is happening without a free trade agreement. So there's lots of things that but we can do. But surely you want one. And the Democrats and the Republicans now apparently seem open to yeah, one. I mean, Why look, not I, pursue I, that? Well, because there's lots of different things that we are cooperating with America on when it comes to economic um, matters, particularly economic security, actually. That's a big priority of ours right now. It's something we talk about in the Integrated Review, is improving our economic security. And that will come by working closely with our allies. That's something that you know, I'll be talking to President Biden about later today. So it doesn't seem like it's on the table? It's just look, there's, uh, people should actually know that our relationship with America economically is very strong. Our exports are growing massively anyway, and we are concluding agreements with states. Remember, many American states are as big as both countries, and actually increasing our econ economic ties at a state level is something that can be really good for Britain and good for jobs, and so we're getting on and doing that. Uh, let's talk about immigration. Are you uncomfortable with some of the language being used with some within your own party when it comes to immigration, the rhetoric being used? Well, I, I, I think when it, when it comes to this matter, of course, tone matters. I've always been clear that what, what I believe we are doing is the right policy. It's also the moral and compassionate policy. Because at the moment we have a situation where people are being exploited by criminal gangs, people are needlessly dying, which is a tragedy, and we saw that recently off the coast of Italy, yeah. and we have a system well, where we, we can't yeah. target our generosity and our compassion, as we always have done, on the world's most vulnerable people because our system is being overwhelmed and with so people that, coming that, illegally. So yeah. I believe what we're doing is absolutely the, the right the thing to matters, do. The policy matters, but language matters in politics too. I mean, would you use the word invasion? To describe what's happening. You know, I, I've been very clear about what I think is going on. But would you use the word invasion? Well, I think people can look at the language I am so using. So you wouldn't use. So what would you say to the Home Secretary who did use the word invasion? I think the, the Home Secretary and I are aligned that this is the right policy to grip this problem. You know, we've got a situation where the number of people coming to the UK illegally over the in past year, uh, past two years rather, has gone up by four times. 
that is the scale of what we are dealing with. We are now spending five and a half million pounds a day but you don't on hotels. Feel, you don't feel now, uncomfortable don't think, with the Prime Minister using the word invasion? I don't think anyone can look at that and say that that is a sustainable situation, especially when people are dying. Now, we have always been a compassionate, generous, welcoming country. Half a million refugees from Ukraine, from Afghanistan, from Syria, from Hong Kong have been welcomed to the UK over the past few years. No one can say that we are not a generous country, but it's got to be that that is done legally, that it's done fairly. At the moment, that is not happening, and we are not able to help the world's most vulnerable people. That is not a situation that is justifiable. The moral and compassionate thing to do is to break this cycle, and that's what our policy will do. Uh, just very finally, on the BBC, uh, there's lots of arguments, and there'll always be arguments about impartiality around the BBC, but there is an argument about funding the BBC. That's the reason that people care about impartiality. As long as you're Prime Minister, there's a charter review coming up, is the licence fee going to be the way the BBC is funded? Well, th there's actually a, a review going on about the right well, way to fund... In principle, though... Well, well no, hang on, there's, there's a review that is examining all the options. The whole point about doing that is to go through all the options and figure out how can we ensure that the BBC, which is a rightly treasured national asset, is going to be in a sustainable position going forward, that it can continue to compete with media companies around the world as the way that we consume our media changes. You know, as those things evolve, it's right that we examine the funding model of the BBC to make sure that it is in the strongest possible position to do the job that we all want it to do, because it is rightly a national institution and we want it to remain strong not just today, but for years into the future.